right. Now I have to say something that's worth uh, recording. <laughs> so, okay. <Yes. laughs> no pressure. Say something controversial. <laughs> Pineapple on pizza is, is excellent. Yeah. So that was that was going to be my example. So, all right, we're on, we're on the same page. Uh, I, I am team pineapple. So Heck yeah, it's delicious. It's, it's the There's same. your headline. All right. I'm, CD calls ham and pineapple delicious pizza. I'm, you know, I'm going to go with it. I'm going to do the, I'm going to do the, the wrestling article and then I'm going to have a fun one. So there we go. I'm getting a, a bunch of stuff out of this, but uh, we are actually here to speak about the leech. Uh, leech I screwed up my first line. Lucha Libre World Cup. Thank God we're not live. Lucha Libre World right. Cup live uh, from Guadalajara, Mexico on Sunday night, March 19th. It's going to air on fight for those that can't be there in attendance. Uh, you are representing Team United States. It's yourself, Sam Adonis, and Johnny Caballero, Johnny gimmick name, however you know him. I, I, will, not, I will not read the whole <laughs> list, but... yeah. Uh, John Hennigan, Morrison, Nitro, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Is, is part of your team. Uh, yes. I think the timing's appropriate. Not only uh, is this the first event in, uh, I believe it's six years, but uh, the World Baseball Classics going on right now. I feel like oh, okay. there's a lot of talk about uh, why players are representing what country and why it's a matter of pride. Do you, I mean, maybe you don't, Maybe you're not seeing the same media I am, but do you feel that sort of same sense of pride in representing your country and representing the United States in a in a tournament like this that doesn't take place every year? Well, I I, I haven't seen the media, so this is news to me. But um, I am proud to have been chosen to represent the United States. Um, I feel like uh, AAA has the opportunity as one of the top wrestling promotions in Mexico to pick any three American wrestlers it wants. To, to represent the United States of America and for me to be chosen out of such a wide array of possibilities uh, is an honor. And um, yeah, I'll definitely take that seriously when I step into the ring and to step into the ring with uh, Johnny Caballero and Sam Adonis by my side, I feel like it's a very eclectic mix, but with our experiences, uh, I feel like we're a very strong team in this in this entire in this entire tournament. Basically, what the baseball players were saying was like, "Here's why I chose to represent this because they can pick like, oh well, this is where my relative was born, and sure, you know, like instead of where you were born or where you got to reside, that sort of thing." I see, yeah. I see. So yeah, well, I I think well, so the difference between their situation and ours is that they obviously have the the opportunity to choose where they play, whereas the promotion AAA picked the picked the participants, chose the teams, and like I said, to be chosen by such an illustrious group for this tournament, um, you know they've seen they've seen countless American wrestlers come through AAA, countless great wrestlers, and to be chosen as as a representative of the United States this year. That that means something to me. So I mean, it's uh, we've got we've got a big we've got a big shoes to fill. But I, I feel like I said, the three of us with our experience, our varied experiences between the three of us, I feel like we're a very strong team in this. Yeah, and you look at the lineup. Like there's the dream team, Ijo del Vikingo. He just yep just got announced for a match on Dynamite with Kenny Omega. So there's plenty of attention yep. on him right now. Psycho Clown, Josh Alexander's doing great things with Impact and the World Heavyweight title over there. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like uh, people are going to hopefully pay attention to uh, Campio de Mundo, Team Rest of the World. You have two okay. competitors from Qatar and uh, Bupinder Gajar from uh, Impact from India. So right. maybe giving – and you, you have you know Mexico, United States, Canada – uh, Japan, all of these sort of wrestling strongholds where I feel like this could maybe be a team to watch where you've been hearing about India's market building, Qatar, the Middle East. Like, I feel like, uh, you know, maybe fans are tuning in to see a name like yourself or see certain teams, but they're going to walk away surprised by maybe some of the people they aren't familiar with, too. Very possible. I mean, this these opportunities, when they come to uh, wrestlers that don't have 
the spotlight on them like I've been fortunate to have over my career or John or, um, you know, Vakingo, uh, you know, Josh Alexander, those people that you've mentioned. Um, yeah, these are opportunities to, to sort of show out and to represent. And the best wrestlers in the world, when they get these opportunities, those are the ones that make that impact and they can make their name in one evening. Like mm -hmm. that sort of thing happened to me uh, the very first time I wrestled in the, the Super 8. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. like that sort of, like not a lot of people knew who I was after those matches, uh, people started to pay attention. So this is an opportunity for those two gentlemen from Qatar and the gentleman <laughs> from India. It's, uh, you know, it's their opportunity to sort of surprise everybody. So, I mean, if they take it, it's up to them. Like it's, it's being handed to them that chance. All right. So they're, they're at one point in their career, you're on uh, sort of on the tail end. I don't want to say, you know, you're done. You're still, no, I mean, be honest, be honest. If I, if this is half, even if this is halfway, which it isn't, no. if this was halfway, I'm on the second half. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, but, I'm at the tail end. I'm, you know, I'm, I, I'm aware enough. You're not going, you know, like you're not on a retirement tour or anything like that. You're still active competing at a high level. I, I'm going to get into that in a, in a minute or so, but sure. you're also working backstage with AEW. I believe you're in a talent relations role. Correct. So you're sort of assuming like a player coach role now where maybe in the past it was like, okay, you're, you're done in the ring. We're going to make you a coach. You're right. not doing that. So do you go into matches that you do take now? And, you know, maybe like, do you, go in with a scouting mentality? Like, Hey, maybe I can find another guy that we could bring in to the fold, so to speak. Not really. Not really. I honestly, I feel like the people that we're interested in are people that are making their name. I, I, I don't feel like I'm going to be surprised by someone on the independence myself. Like the people that Tony likes and the people that Tony gets excited about signing. I feel like those people are already making their name they're getting their spotlight on their own. And he likes to sort of fan the flame of someone who's starting to break out on the independent scene. So like, I, I very rarely feel like, oh, I've never heard of this guy. I'm wrestling tonight. Perhaps he's the next Kenny Omega. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't feel like that's the thing. I feel like it's possible that if I wrestle somebody whose name I've already heard, um, that like I could be, the positive things that I hear about them can be reinforced in a match that I have with them. But I, I, I don't ever think like I'm going to find, it's very rare that you find a diamond in a rough. If it wasn't, mm -hmm. that wouldn't be this, that wouldn't be the cliche, would it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, when I was doing research and one of the, you know, kind of one of the reasons I did ask that was because I know you did some work for defy not too long ago. It felt like it was, a lot more recent than it was. And it, you know, it, it really wasn't too, too long ago. I believe it was October right. or November, but I'm kind of mentioned it before, like you're staying busy competing at a high level. I didn't realize that you have already had, and this is according to cage match. You've had 12 matches so far uh, with AEW ring of honor and warrior wrestling. Uh, there's one that is listed under curry man i don't know why that's there but yeah i, I don't yeah. know i get i get mixed up with him for a while yeah, everyone knows I don't, samoa joe i don't know why they do that to me but okay they do they do have similar builds and frames so sure sure know. sure sure i could see it it's in the jawline yep but uh yeah so other than that uh they're gonna have to fix their website but yes. uh uh 12 matches so far you know you are done with uh scu and you know you have the, like it's a rule now or a, a stipulation that you can't you and Kaz like you guys can't team anymore right did you go into competition uh coming back to compete in ring of honor and AEW like did you have the mentality like hey I'm gonna go to singles did you like ever think you would want to team with somebody because I know more recently you've been doing a couple tag matches like what was sort of the approach it's 100% selfish. It's 100% selfish. I want to try and continue to perform as much as I can. And understanding that we've got such a full roster and, you know, television time being limited, 
Um, my opportunities won't always happen on AEW television. And I recognize that. And I understand it. And I'm not sad about that. I mean, I wish I could be on television more often, but I understand why I'm not. So I want to continue to perform as much as I can. Um, so I was doing a lot of stuff with Defy, doing stuff with Warrior. Um, I, re- I just last night had a match in North Dakota for a, a wrestler, a young man by the name of Kevin Koo, who is a, a, a very good young talent. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, these are things. These are things that I want to continue to do, so I can still sort of scratch that performance itch. Like I'm not 100 percent ready to hang it up, and and it, there will come a time when I am. I I, I know. And like you said, I'm at the tail end of it. So it's closer than, it's closer Again. than, yes, 100%. It's close. I know it's coming soon. It's a knock on the door that I can expect any time. But until that happens, I'm going to try and stay at the top level that I can at my age. And if I can work with the young guys at AEW, great. If I can work with young guys on the independents and sort of if I can find out stuff about them that reinforces like whatever good uh, reputations they may already have, great. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, but I, like I said, it's 100% selfish. I want to perform because that's what got me into this. I, I didn't want to get into professional wrestling with the idea like, oh, you know what? I can't wait to be behind the scenes. I, I still like to be in front of the camera and I'm going to keep doing that as long as I can until until the wheels fall off. Ring, I mean, Ring of Honor makes sense. Like, and I, I totally get, you know, wanting to be selfish. Like, I think you have that right. But Ring of Honor, like you look at your your resume, world championship reign, world television title reign, tag team champion four times, six man tag team champion. You're the first uh, Grand Slam or yeah, first Grand Slam champion. And you yep. also are a triple crown champion. So now that this new era of Ring of Honor is back, do you f- and I know you've mentioned it before. You want to see it return to the pre-pandemic prominence. That's, you know, if anybody watches this and I'm rambling, go check that out. Sidebar. Sorry. But uh, I mean, is that where, is that where you could see yourself being selfish too? Like wanting to sort of build your legacy in ring of honor, this new chapter of ring of honor. Um, Yes and no. I feel like my legacy for ring of honor has already been built. Um, you know, there's two ways to look at it. Like I, you can say I've done everything that there is to do in Ring of Honor, and that's somewhat true. Mm-hmm. But there are still opportunities there. Like, would I would I turn away an opportunity to be world champion again? No. Would I turn away any opportunity to be tag team champion with Matt Seidel, for example? No, mm-hmm. absolutely not. If I had an opportunity, I'd lace the boots right now. So now it really is just a matter. Like, I think there's a lot less pressure on me if it doesn't work out that way, just because it's happened for me before, but I still do want to challenge myself and try to get in those positions where those opportunities come from me. And if I can bring someone like Matt Seidel along with me, great. Or if it, you know, whatever happens in the near future, uh, if it's a younger, if it's a different talent, um, who knows, who knows what the future can hold, but yeah, I'm just trying to leave myself open and available for for as much as I can, whether it's AEW, ROH, or the independent scene, the places that I'm 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 not really pounding the pavement. It's not like I'm calling all these promotions. Like I'm trying to be selective about where I work. Defy is a great place to work. Warrior Wrestling is a great place to work, and I love uh, the the promoters there and the talent that they have there. So I am trying to be selective about where I do this stuff. And uh, but yeah, like I, I want. I've only got a limited amount of matches left. I want to make them all fun and I want to make them all count. Bringing this to a close, a little bit of a full circle moment. Uh, you're being selective. You're doing work that matters that, and you are not calling promoters. You have AAA calling you for something like the Lucha Libre world cup. So you're certainly keeping people's interest and, you know, however long this ride lasts, not to, you know, Cliche it up nope. too much. Hey man, but... it, it could be my last match. It could be my last match Sunday. It could be my last one. And I understand that. And and part of part of the the challenge now is to wrestle like it could be my last match. And like my spirit is willing, and sometimes my flesh is weak, and that's that's the real situation. But as long as my spirit is strong, I'm going to keep doing this as long as I can. 
And, um, you know, I don't think this is the last time that I'll get an opportunity to, to work for AAA. Um, I have a good relationship with, uh, with the company itself. And um, I look forward to Sunday and see what happens. And then, you know, after we win, anything is possible. All right. I like the confidence going into Sunday. Check it out on Fight for anybody watching this. Uh, I'm going to say Christopher Daniels next match, and I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, Thank you very much for your time, man. Have a good weekend. Thank you, man. Have a great day. Appreciate it.